I finally discovered the true meaning behind the name Maryam, the mother of Isa. Oof, oof, oof. Guys, did you see that? Uh, Christian made a new dis discovery. He's going to put on Discovery Channel. Oof, oof, oof. Let's see this new discovery of his. In Islam, in part two of this series, we're going to expose the hidden meaning behind the Islamic name Maryam. Make sure to also watch part one as well regarding the meaning of Isa in Islam. I will include the link for part one in the description box for the people who want to watch it again. <laughs> this is like confused Isa with Isa. <laughs> His previous video says Isa, it does not say Isa. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> they say the meaning of what Warning, Isa means, not Isa. This video will shock you because many of you never seen or heard this before. Christians and even you Muslims. Oof, oof, oof. He made a new discovery, guys. Like no Christian in the world, no Muslim in the world, no person on earth knows his definition except for Rob Christian. Let's see. You will be disturbed and disgusted from what I'm about to show you from the Islamic books that will explain the true <laughs> hidden meaning behind Mary's name. If we ask Muslims who is Mary in Islam, Without any hesitation, they will tell us that she is the best woman and the most respected among women in Islam. Is this really true? Let us see. In Al Ithqan fi Ulum al Quran, volume 2, page 373, by Jalal al-Din al Suyuti, hadith number 5550, we can read. <laughs> What is this guy? Adam Wakil Al Mara Al Leti to Ghazal Al Fityan. Now, first of all, he's using the Tafsir of Suyuti. He's basically translating that these are meanings. He He's basically saying that he doesn't believe that this is the meaning. He's saying that this is what it means in some translation of Arabic. Go search a name in, in Arabic or in any language or in Hebrew, you'll see millions of translations of this name that are different than one another. Now, Ma'na Maryam, he said in Ibriya, in the Hebrew language, means Al Khadim, the one who is devote to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who serves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by worshipping Him. Okay, anyway. Translation And Maryam means the female servant, and also said, the woman who flirts with boys. <laughs> yes, you heard it correct. He didn't say that Maryam flirts with boys. He didn't say that this is the true 100% meaning around it. He just gave you different meanings of it that he saw according to his dictionary. <laughs> Correctly, the woman who flirts with boys. So where's the respect for Mary in Islam? In Islam, Mary is basically called a whore. A woman of the street. Okay, let me tell you something. Where is the respect you have for your prophet David? Okay. Where is the respect you have for your prophet David in Christianity? Let me see where I put it, man. Come on. Let me see. Uh -huh. Let me see. Let me show you something. According to your Bible, David was a prophet in Acts uh, chapter 2 of, of the Bible, verse 29 to 30. Fellow Israelites. I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him an oath that he would place on that he would place one of his descendants on on his throne. So according to you your prophet David was a, your your David was a prophet in Christianity. <laughs> Let me show you something, okay? Uh so according to here, your Bible, it shows the lineage of uh, Jesus, okay? So, in, for example, in Matthew chapter 1 and on, the gene genealogy of Jesus the Messiah. It says this is the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And it goes on and on and on. One of his gene genealogy was... <laughs> Let me show you. One of his gene genealogies here, uh, in, chap in verse 6, and, and Jesse, the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Uriah's wife was Bathsheba, who got married to David and had an adultery affair with David, your prophet. This is how you insult David, okay, your prophet, and you insult Jesus since he came from their lineage. So David, the, f the father of Jesus, 
gave birth to Solomon, and Solomon w uh, came from Uriah's wife. Solomon was from the ancestry of Jesus. Okay, since so Jesus came from David and Uriah's wife, which is Bathsheba. If you scroll on and on and on, you see basically the genealogies they give you. It says, And Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, and Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Okay. Mm. In Christianity, they said that David is the father of Jesus. Okay. David, uh, David married um, Uriah's wife right here, which is Bathsheba. And they got Solomon. And through Solomon, Jesus came. To the generations through Solomon, Jesus came. Okay, let me show you something. <laughs> your Bible, your God, insults David and Jesus with the biggest insult you have ever seen in your whole life. In First, uh, in Second Samuel, uh, verse eleven, chapter eleven, it, it says in the first one, in the spring at the time when kings go off to war, Jake. David sent Joab out with the king's men and the whole Israel army. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged and etc. etc. Verse 2 it says, One evening David got up from his bed and walking around on the roof of the palace. From the roof he saw a woman bathing. So imagine your prophet David, your your prophet, your your pious man, the the the, the honored man whose Jesus came through, right? Who who Jesus is given a, an honorable title by calling him Jesus the son of David. He saw a naked woman taking a bath. He looked at a naked woman. The woman was very beautiful. And <laughs> I don't know who's saying this, if this is Jesus saying this or this is the word of God, your God saying this. The woman was very, very beautiful. <laughs> and David sent someone to find out about her. The man said she is Bathsheba, the daughter of Iliam and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him and he slept with her. Then she went back home. The woman conceived and sent word to David saying, I am pregnant. And then when David, what he did is he killed her husband so he, she does not find out, so he does not find out that his wife got pregnant by David. They had uh, adultery. And he says, In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab, sending it with Uriah. In it, he wrote, Put Uriah out in front where the fighting is fierce, then withdraw from him so he will be struck down and die. So while Joab had the city under siege, right, he put Uriah at the place where he knew the strongest defenders were. When the men of the city came out and fought against Joab, some of the men in David's army fell. Moreover, Uriah the Hittite died. He killed Bathsheba. He killed he killed the husband of the woman Bathsheba, who he had who David had adultery with. Just look at that. Like I, I'm, I just need to say, if if your God is all knowing, why did He just choose Jesus to come from David? If David was going to do that, can't your God is He's all knowing? He can choose Jesus from someone else who is more honorable, who doesn't commit these actions, who doesn't commit like huge sins, like major sins, like having adultery and uh, doing this. This is an insult, and your Jesus coming from that lineage is an insult as well. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna just show you something. Um, if he actually looked, they say that these are these are many translations, right? And if he looks at the um, in Tafsir al Qurtubi, what Maryam means, right? This is not basically what they're saying, but what they're saying is look here as you look. Okay, here when it says wa inni. سميتها مريم يعني خادم الرب في لغتهم. That when Allah says I that when Allah says that the wife of Imran called her Maryam, it means her name means the servant of the Lord of Allah subhanahu wa taala in their language, in the language of Mary. <laughs> this is what it says. He didn't look at that. He just basically said, "Oh, look, I'm gonna choose this translation." This, he, uh, uh, Suyuti was, uh, you know, all these people were using, you know, using the dictionaries to to show you what the name means in Hebrew. Suyuti wasn't Hebrew person. He wasn't Aramaic. These these weren't weren't Hebrew or Aramaic. They were using your translations, your Hebrew translations, your these things. What the Hebrews say? Not none of the Hebrews are Muslims today. What they say the meaning is. <laughs> And you just basically assume, oh, look, it's an insult. You just put in, put, putting out translations. Go to a name, Mary, you'll find millions of translations. 
And in the tafsir of Al-Baydawi for Surah Al-Baqarah verse 87 of the Quran, we read, وَمَرْيَمْ بِمَعْنَى الْخَادِمْ وَهُوَ بِالْعَرَبِيَّ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ كَزِيرِ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ Translation, and Mary means the female servant, and in the Arabic it means a woman that likes to see a lot of men. You do understand what that means, right? A woman who likes to be with many men. Muslims, be honest, which is like Aisha is also found in many other tafsir or commentaries like that of Imam al-Razi, but also in the tafsir of Al-Lusi and many other commentators as well. As you look, 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 look at this guy who doesn't know Arabic. Waqil al-Abida, right? He thought it was Abda because Abd means an Arabic slave. Abda means a uh, female. Uh, Abda, there's no such thing as Abda. There is Amma in Arabic. Amma is called the female slave. It's not called the Abda. Like that Christian prince who doesn't know, he called he, he called one Muslim woman that called him one time Abdullah. <laughs> there's no feminine name of Abdullah. It's Amma. Amatullah, right? Abdullah is for males. Amatullah is for females. <laughs> He called her Abdullah, like, 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 he thought there was a feminine way of saying it. He doesn't know, right? They don't know Arabic. Anyway, <laughs> Al-Abida means the devoted woman, the one who worships uh, Allah a lot. I'll prove it to you. Let me show you. Al-Abida does not mean slave. Okay, look here. If we look at the Riyad al-Salihin, Sahih Muslim, right? We return to the Prophet Muhammad SAW from a journey, and when we entered the suburbs of al Medina, he said, we are returning in safety, turning to our Rabb, worshipping him, عابدون, and praising him. As you can see here, uh, the Prophet Muhammad said, meaning worshipping him, not slaves of him. عابدون means we worship. And I can show you. This is what the Quran usually shows for these non-Arabic speakers. Okay. In Surah Al-Baqarah. Okay. Surah Al-Baqarah. Verse 2. Chapter 200. Uh, sorry. Verse 2. Uh, sorry. Chapter 2. Verse 221. It says. وَلَا تَنْكِحُ الْمُشِّكَاتِ حَتَّى يُؤْمِنْ وَلَا أَمَةٌ مُؤْمِنَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِنْ مُشِّكَةٍ وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَتْكُمْ Right. It says, do not uh, marry the polytheists, polytheist woman, until they believe. And a polytheist servant or slave of Allah is better than a polytheist female, even if, they, if you like it. وَلَا تُنْكِحُوا الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَتَّى يُؤْمِنُوا وَلَا عَبْدٌ مُؤْمِنٌ خَيْرٌ مِنْ مشرك. It says, and the male servant, slave, abd, is, which is a servant, every Muslim, who is a believer is better than a disbelieving slave. Okay, so it shows here that for females it doesn't use abda, it use ama. Okay, ama. This is what ama means. Ama means a female slave or female servant. Will you say ama to Allah, not abdatullah? Well, this guy doesn't know Arabic, bro. Okay. Anyway, we roasted them, we spanked them a little bit. <laughs> 